and welcome to Bicycle Touring Talk. My name is George Schlackeck. The one and only. And this is the series where I tell you all about my 2017 bicycle tour across Canada. Before we get going, I'd like to mention a fellow YouTuber, Agnieszka from Wheels on a Bike, who's on a bicycle tour across Canada right now, posting regular updates. Her videos are great, so you might want to check them out. But first, let me tell you about the day my wife Barbara and I joined forces in Mississauga, Ontario to go on the ride of the Niagara Peninsula that definitely meant a big detour for me. The point of my tour was never really to get from coast to coast as fast or most direct as possible. It was more to see as much as possible and since I have family in Ontario, I wanted to see them too. Of course, it meant a lot being able to share the experience with Barbara who had flown in from Alberta and was now equipped with a brand new bike from Sportcheck. It was Thursday, July 20th, Barbara's first day of bicycle touring in Ontario. We were staying at the Super 8 Hotel in Mississauga, starting our day with a complimentary breakfast. Then we were in a race to get everything packed onto our bikes before checkout time. We had Barbara's suitcase that needed to be stored somewhere until she'd fly back home two weeks later. Thankfully, the hotel staff agreed to do that for us. When we finally wheeled our loaded bikes into the elevator, we realized that it was raining like crazy outside. Mississauga, Ontario, and it's raining, and we're not going out in the rain, so we'll just stand here until it tapers off. Hi, first day of rain, yay! <laughs> this definitely wasn't cycling weather. We had no choice but to wait in the lobby. It took about an hour before we could even think about leaving the hotel with our rain jackets on. Anyone who's been to Mississauga before knows that huge part of it are industrial areas. The Super 8 we had stayed at was part of a truck stop and it was surrounded by warehouses next to major roads and highways. Bike lanes did not exist here. The whole area was designed with trucks in mind, not people on bicycles or on foot. We managed to work our way south toward the shore of Lake Ontario, mostly by using sidewalks, which is probably illegal, but it felt a whole lot safer. Once we were on Lakeshore Road, we found the restaurant to have lunch. We also did some groceries at the store next door. The afternoon was equally challenging. In theory, there's a trail following the shore of Lake Ontario called the Waterfront Trail. In reality, this trail doesn't exist. It's just a sequence of promising signs leading along the shore via some local parks, city streets, and construction zones. Mm -hmm. 
I find it ridiculous to call this a trail, but there is a beautiful website about it showing maps and a ton of praise about it. I wonder how many people get fooled by this each year. But to be fair, my tour was in 2017, so perhaps improvements have been made since. We eventually ended up at a Tim Hortons in Burlington after some riding on a poorly made bike lane that was separated from car traffic by a white line only. It was time to think about a camping spot. As we were sitting inside with our iPads and coffees, a young man spotted us through the window. The Cannondale bike he was riding gave it away. He was a serious cyclist and bicycle tourer. We ended up having a conversation about the tours we had done and he told us that he and his girlfriend were about to leave for a tour of Quebec. He also had a tip on where we could camp. There was supposed to be a beach next to the Hamilton Skyway Bridge with an actual trail and lots of places to camp, undisturbed. We kept riding through kilometers of city, but eventually reached the beach area and the lift bridge that was supposed to indicate that the best spots were just ahead. We followed a group of other cyclists across the bridge, which wasn't exactly straightforward due to two tunnels and repaving on the bridge itself. Once on the other side, we started looking for camping spots, but it was almost dark. One thing we had not expected was that there were houses all along the other side of the trail. We would be camping right across from somebody's backyard, but it was too late to do anything else. We found a spot with bushes and a perfectly sized area of sand just far enough from the water. The tent was set up quickly. As soon as we were about to settle down, Barbara pointed out a man who was watching us from the other side of the trail. <laughs> this wasn't good. The man obviously lived there and he didn't look pleased. We didn't dare to approach him and ask if it was okay to camp on the shore. There was no other place for us to go anyways, at least not that we knew of. What were the odds? Was he going to call the cops or the city of Hamilton to report us? Was Barbara's first night of Ontario stealth camping going to end with us being evicted from our spot in the middle of the night with no alternatives? The man eventually walked away without saying anything. He had surely noticed our tent and the bikes. We were almost certainly breaking a bylaw, but tired as we were, we decided that it was going to be okay. We would tell the cops that a local cyclist had advised us to camp here. Is that a good enough excuse to avoid a fine and perhaps even eviction? I have to say that by now I was used to setting up camp in the weirdest places. I had already gotten away with a lot, a lot of stealth camping. The guy across the trail probably wasn't impressed, but this was a public beach and we were not affecting him in any way. Perhaps he would just go inside, relax, go to bed. We fell asleep to the sound of the QEW on one side and the waves of Lake Ontario on the other. Well, at least I did. What do you think? Were we left alone for the night? Was this okay? I know some of you will say that we should have planned a bit better, but if you look on the map of the Greater Toronto and Hamilton areas, you'll see that there aren't a lot of official campgrounds at all. Hotels are so expensive. Perhaps this public beach was a really bad idea. I was a bit worried both about Barbara getting relaxed enough to sleep 
and a possible visit by the cops. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened in the next episode. Before you go, hit the like button once and consider subscribing if you haven't done so yet. There are plenty of more videos in this growing series that you may enjoy. Just check out the playlist and then pick the place you'd like to know more about. There you go. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel.